No mai hare mai tēnā koutou katoa. Daja hao. A very big welcome to everyone in Aotearoa and China. And a special welcome to Mike Rogers, our Acting Deputy Consul General in Shanghai. It's marvellous to be with you all this evening for this first ever online event. As we all know, 2020 has been an extraordinary year for everyone and we've all learned to communicate with each other in new ways. Keeping in touch with our alumni base is of course very important for us. And one of the big advantages of Zoom is that we can connect so easily across the globe. It's tremendous that over 350 of our Chinese alumni, students and friends in New Zealand and Greater China are joining us tonight. Zooming too has been very important for us in terms of keeping in touch with our university partners in China and maintaining our links through our various international university networks. You will hear more later about an alumni event in Shanghai on November the 3rd. It's taking place during New Zealand Week, a festival promoting New Zealand food, beverage and culture across China. It's particularly noteworthy as the first in-person event for all New Zealand alumni in China this year. So those of you in Shanghai, please try and get there. I'd like to tell you a little of how we've been working with our international students who were not able to join us on campus in the first semester. We swung into action very quickly with online delivery of our programs, offering personalised study plans of students abroad and additional support for students here. This semester, we have over 2,000 students studying offshore. Many of these students are in China. One of several exciting initiatives has been the establishment of three learning centres with partner universities in Chongqing, Harbin and Nanjing to give our students the option of an on-campus experience while studying with us. Around 330 students are enrolled. These centres are likely to continue into 21 as it will be some time before our border opens up fully. And can I say that these initiatives have been very much welcomed across New Zealand, even mentioned by our Prime Minister in a recent uh, summit in Auckland. And finally, a big highlight of our university year has been the arrival of our new Vice-Chancellor, Professor Dawn Freshwater. Professor Freshwater has held senior university positions in the UK and Australia, most recently as Vice-Chancellor of the University of Western Australia. She joins us with a distinguished international reputation, already knowing many of our Chinese partners. Her expertise is in mental health, which as you all know, has been a major issue in the global pandemic. Now, it's not so easy to clap by Zoom, but please join me in welcoming Professor Dawn Freshwater. And over to you, Dawn. Dasha hao, tenakoto katoa, and welcome. Thanks to the club for a decade of building relationships with Chinese communities. It's been almost 10 years to the day since the University of Auckland Chinese Alumni Club's official launch, the 12th of October, 2010. In that time, more than 31,000 Chinese alumni, over 50% of you actively engaged with the university. The Auckland Alumni Club has 13,754 active members. And we value this role, the role that you play, connecting with us incredibly. It also helps us to connect with the city's wider Chinese community. Your experience is of enormous value to us in building relationships. And of course, I have that experience from my previous role as a Vice Chancellor at the University of Western Australia. And I'm looking forward to continuing building those relationships here. Now for a short update on the university. The good news is that in an exceptional and challenging year for us all, we remain the highest ranked New Zealand university 
in the main world university rankings. We're number one in the Times Higher Education University Impact rank Rankings for the second year. And we're the only New Zealand university in the top 100 of the QS World Rankings, equal 81st. In 13 of those subjects, we're in the world's top 50. And in the top 100, we have 33 subjects. We continue to be New Zealand's leading university for graduate employability, 71st worldwide, very highly rated for innovation, entrepreneurship and international connections. With the obvious knock to international student scores this year for universities worldwide, we'll continue to keep our eyes on this. Other highlights include the development of our new university strategy, which will give a window into the future, the next 10 years of the university's future. And in that unexpected context of the pandemic, the strategy is being developed, not only taking account of the pandemic, but of the many global trends and influences. It's very appropriate that this year's subject for the series, Entrepreneurship, is steering business through the challenges and the uncertainties that we are all faced with. And in that context, our high-level vision for the university's next 10 years will really place people like yourselves, the University of Auckland Chinese Alumni Club, at the heart of what we do, maintaining those relationships and ensuring that we reiterate the importance of China and New Zealand in relation for the university and our engagement with our Chinese alumni here in New Zealand and globally. Now I'm going to hand over to Rachel Yang, the president of the Chinese Alumni Club, one of the club's founders and organizers of this very timely event. Rachel. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, Professor Dawn Freshwater, and Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Jen uh, Jennifer Dixon. 大家晚上好, 新西兰的及海外的校友朋友们能参加本次活动。我是本次讲座的主持人Rachel。就在刚开始最后一分钟,然后我们已经人数已经超过了500人。在此,感谢十年以来一直支持我们并参加我们活动的校友。也欢迎
we have three entrepreneurs here with me in the studio, Ia, Daniel, and Jesse, to share their insight into tonight's topic, steering a business through challenges and uncertainty. All of them have been running their business for many years. We'll get to know the speakers and hear a bit more about their business before we jump into the main topic. Just a reminder, you, may, uh, you can submit your questions into the Q &A, um, for the Q&A session by going to slido.com and you can type the code on the screen. Please submit the question in English. You want to stay to the end of, for the prize draw because we have five gift packs to give away and I'm not going to show you what's inside because it's, it's very, very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> for, those of, for those of you overseas or outside of Auckland, yes, we can ship it to you. <laughs> In end of the panel discussion, I'll wrap up and share the details of an exciting event in Shanghai. So to start off, Ia, you run many successful e-commerce business and you are known for the TV reality show, Boss Babe. Ia, tell us more about your business, your company, and what do you focus on? Uh, so I started my first business when I was 21. Uh, my first business was a shapewear company called Waist Trainer. Uh, later I moved on to protein powder fitness supplements called Lutz Fitness. Uh, and then I did gift boxing, I did celebration box. Um, I started a girls events company called Girls in Business. And last year I did some filming for my own reality TV show called Boss Babes. Uh, and that was, yeah, that was really interesting. So I've done a whole range of things. Okay. And then we'll move on to um, Daniel. Tell us, about, tell us more about your company and what's your profession, professional area of focus. Sure, so SPA64 is the business that I run. <clears throat> We're an artificial intelligence agency, and what we do is we help businesses apply AI to their business. And so that means that whether it's improving their customer experience or automating the systems or creating insights that they otherwise wouldn't have had, uh, so that's um, we're using a range of tools, uh, technology uh, to do that. Okay, great, interesting. Um, thanks, Daniel. And now let's um, bring in Jesse. Jesse is our mixed um, medical expert. Jesse worked in different hospitals and clinics prior to becoming a chief operating doctor in two large medical groups. You're now you're running two large medical centers in Auckland. Tell us more about your business and your center. Yeah. So good evening, everyone. Uh, um, it's my pleasure to be here today. Um, so um, my 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 um, professional uh, career is as a medical doctor, um, in, in particularly as a family doctor. I've been uh, practicing as a doctor for more than 12 years. Um, and I'm the director of um, an operational manager for Windsor Medical Center and the funder for Caring Clinic Doctor Group. Um, Windsor Medical Center um, it's the largest Asian focus um, medical center in North Shore. Um, we have um, provided comprehensive services, um, uh, including all the primary care health, um, and with a team, uh, with multidisciplinary team in on the on site uh, to provide one-stop shop to to the clientele. And Caring Clinic, um, on top of um, uh, primary care. Uh, services. We also provide cosmetic medicine services and have a dedicated uh, minor surgery room to provide minor surgery to our clientele. Um, these two clinics, uh, we do have a um, variety of team joining our, um, our team to provide different expertise, including um, multilingual experience um, doctors, nurses, pharmacists. Um, acupuncturist, uh, physiotherapy, um, chiropractor, and also um, allowing health providers such as um, uh, mental health counselor and also visiting specialists. Um, 
the aim for our um, two large medical group is to provide um, accessible, high quality services to our greater population with uh, diverse uh, ethnicity background and cultural background. Okay, that's very interesting. Jesse, you cover almost everything mm -hmm. in the medical area. Um, thanks, Jesse. I'm also an entrepreneur myself, running accounting practice called Y Square Child Accountant, providing a lot of opportunity to advise business owners such as on tax, compliance, and other financial matters. You know, regardless of the uncertainty of the current business environment, there's two things is certain: tax and this. <laughs> to streamline your business, um, to streamline your business finance finance practice or navigate business recovery, having the right tool and the right advice is key. So my business wise which, um education provide the trainings for your business on practical tax and zero skills, or to graduate students on thinking who start want to to start a business. I also st um, started in the financial advisory space because I'm passionate about. Entrepreneur, helping entrepreneur in New Zealand to succeed. I'm also curious, Jesse, what got you started in the business in the first place, and what inspired you in the venture into medical um, services? Mm. During my med school year placement, I had the opportunity to visit different um, communities, and I find that there's room, uh, a lot of opportunity uh, in. Uh, in terms of improving the medical services, especially so in Asian health. Um, I, in order to take control of what I want to achieve in the future and uh, make real change in decision making, I become, I, I become, I wanted to become a, um, a business owner, um, especially running a, um, uh, some clinics in the future. So the idea was uh, in med school. So, um, in order to equip uh, myself to the future challenge, I actually completed um, a commerce degree, uh, a business degree at the uh, University of Auckland, followed a medical degree. So, um, and after working in different, different hospital setting and um, community setting, um, I was offered a partnership um, opportunity in 2011 uh, as a business partner at Windsor Medical Center. And um, that was the beginning of my um, business journey. And uh, well, I could actually put a lot of effort and implement a lot of my entrepreneurship uh, idea into a real medical clinic business. Um, so as a result, our community has been greatly benefited from, uh, from, from the change that I make from the medical center. And our business has been um, uh, having the record high, fast growing clientele in history. Mm. Um, so now we are one of the biggest um, uh, Asian focus uh, community primary care center in North Shore area. And then our clientele actually cover not only from North Shore, we probably cover a lot from um, for the North Island um, and probably um, the West Auckland area and Central Auckland area. Mm. So, um, so um, in the recent year, I can sense um, there might be a, a demand in the uh, other suburbs such as Auckland CBD area. Um, so at the same time, the government, uh, especially uh, the, the from the Ministry of Health, um, actually providing quite a lot of um, Asian health initiative, um, and in alignment with the CBD um, planning for infrastructure and investment plan. So uh, I, s I saw the opportunity to open up another clinic um, on Queen Street, Auckland Centre, in 2016. Um, and our clinic, um, because it's a new clinic, we have put in a lot of um, technology into our business um, and, and we want to make a, a high quality accessible clinic for everybody who mm -hmm. actually are um, in the, living in the city, working in the city and also provide quite a lot of, uh, um, of services to the international students as well. Okay, yeah. thanks, Jesse. That's interesting. Like mm. uh, to know about how you're expanding your mm. business. Well, yeah. um, so Daniel, 
You've earned a PhD degree in bioengineering, holding multiple license patents, and have been featured in BBC. And you also were chief evangelist for Stretch Science before becoming the CEO of co-founder of Spark 64. So tell us, like, you know, what got you started in your business? Well, I've always felt um, uh, inspired to do something around entrepreneurship. And I just remember when I was when I was younger, and I must have been maybe like 12 or 13 years old at the time, and um, uh, I saw an idea to um, uh, fix things. And um, so w what I would do was um, my, my iPod had broken at the time, and so I, I ordered some parts and I took it apart and I replaced it. And then I thought that, well, if, if my iPod broke, maybe other people needed that done as well. Mm -hmm. So I started buying broken iPods on Trade Me, which is the equivalent of eBay, and, um, and I just started fixing them and, and selling them again. Um, afterwards, I realized that I wasn't the only person who saw this opportunity, mm -hmm. and quite often I'll be competing with other people who are basically doing the same stuff, and there was only five or six people doing it at the time. And that was when I realized that um, I needed to do something that really differentiated myself mm -hmm. and what, what we did. And, and that led me to obviously study engineering, get into more, um, I guess, high-tech uh, kind of uh, work. Um, where, where Spark 64 came about was I uh, actually just met some really great people at the university. Mm -hmm. And I felt that that was probably the biggest takeaway for me is uh, meeting the people that I eventually started a business on, and that was seven years ago. Well, that's quite inspirational. Like, you know, you started when you just start fixing the, your own iPod <laughs> and then suddenly doing AI. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's a, like a, that's a different journey. Yeah. Um, so, Ia, tell us about how you um, actually started your business at age 21. Well, it's quite funny you say that because I forgot uh, and think sitting here I've just remembered that when I was probably like 14, 15, I was buying stuff in bulk online and reselling it, like mm -hmm. taking a new photo reselling mm -hmm. it. So I think that's when I first started becoming entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. I don't think at the time I knew. Uh, and then when I went to Auckland Uni after high school, I remember I enrolled in finance and law and I thought I'm going to become a lawyer, a commercial lawyer uh, and I came into my class, I got the textbook, it was this thick and after the class I returned the book, <laughs> I thought that is too long, I'm not reading that um, and I switched to BCom, something else in BCom. Mm. Uh, in my second year of Auckland Uni there was this lady called Sophia, uh, she actually started uh, a business that I really love. It was called Nasty Gal. It was a clothing e-commerce brand. She was young, uh, and she also, when she was younger, she used to also buy and sell stuff on eBay. And I thought, oh, I want to be like her. Mm. So I, I asked my dad. I said, do I have to finish my last year at Auckland Uni? And he said, yes, you, you have to finish. <laughs> so I finished. It's fine. Um, and then as soon as I finished, I launched my first business. Mm. Um, which actually failed, but then my second business was the waist trainer, and that one did quite well, mm. um, and it just went from there. That's really interesting. Can I just know, like, what's the failed one called? Um, it was called yeah. I'll Take All Three. So it was a clothing one, oh, okay. and I was I was trying to be like Sophia, oh, but yeah. I was twenty one and I didn't know what I was doing. So, so you do need to have like some kind of like a failing experience in order to succeed. Yeah, year. yeah, yeah. Definitely. You're learning from your fail. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, that's interesting. So, so 2020 obviously it's going to be a very challenging year for a lot of people. Do you think 2021 uncertainty, uh, 2020 uncertainty, is an uh, opportunity or is a threat, or is both? It was definitely a threat when you know all of a sudden we have no air freight um, mm. and everything's changed we're all under lockdown so that was definitely a threat to everyone's business mm. uh, but I think because of that everybody had to think uh, problem solve how how can I pivot how can I um, you know how can I get through this so every single business had to change and find opportunity uh, to evolve and adapt mm. um, so it's just pushed everybody so it potentially it's a good thing okay so it's opportunity and threat become opportunity. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Daniel? What do you think? Is it opportunity, threat, or both? Well, I, I feel I have a bias here as as, as a <laughs> entrepreneur, startup or person, right? Mm. Um, if, if you think about, if you're thinking about running a business or starting a business, mm. this is the best time mm -hmm. because this is the time where market forces are changing the most. Mm. 
this is a time where the incumbents and the previous businesses, they're the ones that their business models have been forced to change and they can't move as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. So by nature of being smaller and more agile, this is a great time to be a small business, right? But now if you're looking at, say if you're operating an existing business and it's a big business and it's slow and it can't move, then this is much more, I guess, damaging for you or you're trying to figure out how do I adapt and it's a lot harder. Mm, true. Yeah, um, for entrepreneurs, it could be opportunity. Yeah, that's right. So it's a lot of encouragement for our young entrepreneurs here mm -hmm. out of there. How about Jesse? Um, obviously, you're in the medical area. Like, yep. <laughs> do you think COVID nineteen is going to be a or twenty twenty is going to be a threat, opportunity, or both? Um, probably my Chinese upbringing tells me to look at the corn from two perspective. Um, so uh, the Chinese word Wei Ji is way as danger of threats and at the same time it comes together as opportunity Ji Ji Hui. Yeah. Mm. So um, from the medical world we uh, I think we are the interest industry directly facing the threats. Um, it's because of uh, COVID nineteen. So um, and everyone all of a sudden need to change. Okay. Mm. Um, mm. but before that it seems to be we are drinking on a, a lot a lots of promotioning about like virtual consultation mm. but the uptake for clinic uh, we were the first clinic out of um i think 63 clinic from our pho offering virtual consultation since um the beginning of our business in 2016. Mm. um we were promoting um uh, cloud-based online business um, with the database we can actually access anywhere uh, and provide uh, virtual consultation but unfortunately um, back then 2016 it seemed to be not a fashion mm. but in 2020 it seemed to be suddenly everyone need to jump into it okay so um, talking about the 2020 particularly for us even though it's a challenge time for 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 Windsor Medical Center or Caring Clinic but we are quite doing well we are well prepared for it um, but so so I can see more opportunity when we are well pre prepared for the foundation we can see jump ahead to do expand the business mm -hmm. Um, and give more services to the, to the clientele. Why other clinic or other business are failing or not coping? Mm. They are actually trying to build up the foundation, but we are actually already fly up to the sky. Yeah. So in in other words, I I, I, I value this is more um, opportunity, uh, especially from talking about from the entrepreneurship point of view. Myself, yeah. That's interesting how you say building the foundation to prepare for the uncertainty. That's mm. quite important, eh? Mm. So let's jump into the main question, like the main topic today. Mm. So uh, managing uncertainty. Mm. So Jesse, tell us about a time how you deal with um, challenges and uncertainty personally. Personally, um, so everyone aware that 2020 is a sudden change for everything. Um, I think especially so for medical industry mm -hmm. uh, because we are um, facing uh, medical challenge mm -hmm. um, as well as business challenge. So at the beginning of the year, I, I vividly remember <laughs> I just had a long trip in China <laughs> uh, in December and early January. So when we came back to New Zealand um, in the probably on the 29th of uh, January, mm. we we heard story about Wuhan is, was shutting down, and all of a sudden, and the whole world has changed. So we, because we, we we have a lot of um, background from from China, we we, we know how serious w uh, it was. So. Um, and and then our responsive t uh, plan was quite. Uh, we, we activate our responsive plan uh, by uh, having like uh, staff aware of the uh, po possible pandemic at that time. Uh, and and at around that time, our client our clientele was in a panic state. Um, well ahead of the mainstream in New Zealand, basically. Mm -hmm. So I can see the the New Zealand or uh, other part of uh, the world is slowly responding, probably in March, just before the lockdown. Okay. So uh, so when the medical business facing, I think in particularly, um, 
COVID-19, it was not called COVID-19 because we don't know what the virus is about. Um, so number one, um, our staff is facing a, a new challenge by um, answering the phone call from all the, our clientele, um, ask what happened, <laughs> what's going on, and what, what, what should we do? Um, we, don't, we didn't have an answer back then, but we trying to uh, have the strategic planning every day. Um, number one, we stop up the, uh, the, the mask, for example, for our clinic. Uh, we prepare to, to know that we're going to give to our client uh, when it comes and our staff need to be having a everyday education about what's going on basically to upskill their, their, their knowledge or, um, and we have um, information from Ministry of Health from even back to China we, we, I, I did watch the, the program and, and keep it updated from from the news or from China um, so that was the challenge back then as a medical um, and and as a business, um, as probably we are facing staff, it's um, probably dealing with uh, lots of stress. Even though we got a, um, during the lockdown, um, even though the, the, the appointment and business, face-to-face -face appointment has dropped significantly. Uh, I think in New Zealand as a whole, in, in March, it's dropping about 60 to 80% of face-to-face -face consultation. Mm. So the staff need to all of a sudden learn how to deal with switch to another mode to do virtual consultation. And at the same time, using their everyday, ever evolving information to advise patients. So I think it's quite stressful. Um, and, and the business, um, in order to survive, we want to keep our staff. But on the other hand, we're facing a dilemma that probably volume is not enough to sustain. So we developed a strategy with some of the staff and probably need to take some, some leave. I personally stepped down myself, for example, and I work from home. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have um, a management team meeting on a very regular basis and keep, keep to, um, and talking to the uh, PHO and the DHP at the same time. So. Um, Around the time in February, uh, late February already, we set up uh, quite a lot of changes. All of a sudden, other than 2016, we have online or, or, or telephone or virtual consultation. We need to build up a system um, booking online. Okay, we encourage everyone to book online, not using the telephone, because the telephone might be reserved for answering the real clinical questions, <laughs> for example. Booking online. Uh, payment online, um, and then we use our WeChat payment, we use our PayPal, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we, we try to um, inform all our clients by text message, bold text messaging about what's going on and mm -hmm. what's the update. Mm -hmm. um, and do we do have an online enrollment for new clients, they don't need to come in, and also they can actually upload their ID because we need to identify the the person um, before we do uh, mm -hmm. prescribe medicine, for example. And an electronic prescription, uh, that's another thing that we did quite well. Um, and, and especially our Windsor Medical Center pharmacists, um, during the, the pandemic, um, they provide a free uh, delivery to the, by Korea, mm. the medicine, okay. yeah. So I think those are the challenging we uh, just, um, not long ago, but mm. it's still quite, quite vivid to the team, and I think we become a stronger team after all this. Okay, that's a lot of challenge. I can imagine as mm. a like um, person working the medical in the industry, you are actually like on the yeah. front line. <laughs> you mm. actually you know anything if you you know if you missed, it might just putting yourself into risk. Mm. So that's it's really good, and you how you see the challenges, and then you, how you actually you know like uh, overcome the challenge by providing all the you know virtual consultant consultations, electronic mm. you know like um, you know ways of purchasing all the pharmaceutical like um, mm. you know materials. Mm. <laughs> and okay, I'm just gonna jump into um, Daniel. Mm. Um, Daniel, like um, tell me about you know like um, the face the challenges and certainty you are facing. Um, you know, maybe in the early stage of your um, entrepreneur like journey, or could be like your work from sure. home. <laughs> you mm. know, during the lockdown. 
oh, where do I start? There's so many. <laughs> we, I feel like we live we live in like constant uncertainty, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think some of the big decisions I've had to make, um, and actually going back to uh, one was at university, which was um, coming at to the end of my degree as an undergraduate, and then going, what do I do after I graduate? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I had a couple of job offers on the table. I was thinking about um, uh, doing post grad, but I wasn't really sure. Um, uh, I did make the decision that um, I wanted to continue to upskill myself, I wanted to get better um, uh, at, at some of the technical stuff and that's kind of what got me into the PhD. And then I realized that was a big like uncertainty thing because the, the, the whole thing about the PhD is you, you have to do something new. You have to contribute to something novel that hasn't been done before and for the first maybe like two two years, um, I, I was going, oh man, uh, am, I, am I actually making anything new? Um, <laughs> is it gonna happen? Um, um, am I gonna fail at my PhD? Mm. And so, um, but luck, luckily I think there was just a moment where you, something happens and you realize actually um, I'm, I'm okay, like um, mm. I've done the work, I know it's gonna work out, it's, it's really good. Um, uh, we, we have similar things um, in terms of like our business right at the, at the moment because going through COVID there's a lot of, lot of things that are changing and one of the things was around working from home and um, we, we've had to do a lot to uh, adapt to that. Um, being a business that's very centered around our people, our staff, we make a lot of effort to make sure people feel connected. Uh, so for example, we, um, we do these virtual uh, donut coffee calls where anybody can call up anybody on the team and actually they have to do that and just, just have a chat for like 15, 20 minutes. You don't have to be about work, it doesn't have to be about, about anything. Um, we do. Um, uh, we, we've got a Fitbit for everybody, uh, wearable <laughs> tracker. So when you're, in, you know, in your lockdown, you're going for walks. Um, we've got a team leaderboard, and it shows how many steps everybody has done, who, mm -hmm. who's at the top of the steps. So just all these little things help keep the team together. Oh, that's. I wish I'm in your company, like in a free fit. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite good. That's quite nice of you. And how you, you actually told me how you start a day by like just walking around the blocks, you know, just get the fresh mind and come back to the home. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's quite interesting. yeah. So I, I guess one of the I guess one of the tips I found um, mm -hmm. working from home is um, the, the line the line between working mm -hmm. and home gets blurred. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to separate, and mentally, especially if your um, say your office is your bedroom or that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what one thing I guess one thing I've I've learnt is um, before you start work, go outside the house and go for a walk, mm -hmm. and that kind of just mentally prepares you that okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start my work mode, and when you finish at the in the afternoon or in the evening stop what you're doing and then go outside again and go for another walk and that kind of resets your mind so when you come back into the home you're no longer in that work mode. Mm, that's a very good tip and that increase your steps as well. <laughs> oh for sure, sure. <laughs> okay, that's very really interesting. Um, so yeah, tell, tell us about a time when you have to, you know, facing challenges and, um, you know, uncertainty and, you know, I know you're being a reality show and you have many e-commerce business and, you know, like you, how you deal with all these like uh, social media criticism on you. Uh, I feel like, you know, anybody that builds a profile, um, people they're, they do tend to criticize you mm. so it has been hard uh, over the last few years especially maybe after the TV show the more media I get the more I get criticized I guess uh, but I think you just have to like take it for what it is like it's I'm never going to see these people in in real life they're probably never gonna say this to my face um, it is it's hard sometimes definitely being in the media um, but yeah, it's just having to deal with it. <laughs> how do you deal with that, like yourself? How do you, how do you like, you know, overcome the the, the the challenges? How do you deal with that personally? Like, when I was mm. when I was younger, mm. it was hard. Mm. So I'd see somebody write a comment, um, "Ear did this, is that," um, and then you really take it to heart and you think, "Oh, have I done that?" And you get really worried. Uh, and then it happens, you know, a lot more, and you kind of think, mm. "I haven't actually really even done anything." Um, I feel like people because you are in a spotlight or you are in the public eye that people, they just judge you or they just make things up or whatever, they say anything. So now I kind of just have to think, this is just what it is um, and just move on. It, I can't let it affect me anymore. Yeah, so we just have to be like strong with all the social media bullying around. Like it's also teaching young entrepreneurs, like, you know, don't be worried on any 
criticize on mm. what you do and what you know what what's you, how you know how, what you what, what stuff you've been working on just focus on your entrepreneurial journey mm -hmm. yeah just do do well on your stuff don't worry about what other people say you yeah. know so that's um quite good so we're just going through the next question so um so yeah what do you expect the next um challenges for your company in the next probably six to 12 months time? Uh, so for me, I run like product businesses, so I sell products. Mm. Um, and this year in particular, it's been quite difficult uh, with air freight. Mm. So air freight used to be quite cheap. Uh, and then everyone had to shift to sea freight. So with that, it means instead of planning one month ahead, I have to now plan three months ahead. I need more cash, it affects my cash flow. Um, Little things like that. So recently we've looked at getting 3PLs uh, in America and Australia so that we can send product direct from those countries to our customers in those countries. Uh, so just tweaking little things like that. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think more people are gonna go online. Uh, for us, we're already online, but yeah, doing a lot more digital marketing. Mm, okay. yeah. More digital marketing and more like cash flow planning yeah more cash, cash flow, flow planning. planning i need your help with that <laughs> <laughs> um so daniel like tell us about like you know what your business your company is gonna you know expecting to face next six to twelve months time sure um i think i think all of our businesses are quite similar we're, we're all trying to trying to grow trying to do well um, we all have challenges on a day-to-day -day basis um, our, our business is very much around staying at the cutting edge of technology and that's kind of where where we how we differentiate and position ourselves and one of the things as AI becomes more popular um, there are more and more competitors coming into the space so we need to constantly uh, being um, staying at that cutting edge understanding what is new what is latest mm -hmm. uh, what can we do um, that others can't do um, coupled with that is the people side of the business because we're very much around um, uh, 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 good talent. So finding really good people to join the team uh, and making sure that we maintain and keep that team culture. Mm. Mm. That's quite good, important. Eh? You, you like the people who work around you with you, like you actually like them as well. And also looking after your staff is quite important because I remember the quote says, you know, you look after your staff, your staff will look after your clients. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. So Jesse, um, tell me about like you know um, your company. The challenges my facing next to next you know six to twelve months time. Mm. For the coming six to twelve months time, I think the uh, couple of uh, key challenges I can identify. Um, number one, we are in a medical professional field. Um, so uh, staff training and uh, would be the top priority. Um, uh, but on the other hand, the challenge is um, the staff turnover might be a, a, little, a little bit of issue. Um, uh, not everyone can willing or, or happily continue to be a, a medical profession. Um, especially so for probably nursing staff, receptionist staff, um, because it's probably a little bit uh, unfair for them to handle all this as they are the front line of the front line mm -hmm. for receptionists, to be honest. Uh, it's very sad to lose a uh, uh, receptionist when when we when they are well trained and because of this um, uncertainty time or, 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 or panic stage um, they are leaving the profession. Um, so that's one of the challenge uh, for, for for us. Um, but in order to 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 retain staff, to be honest, uh, we I think we need to reinvest in um, training. Um, and and also look after them well. Mm. And I, I think Daniel's been, been doing a good job. Um, so having 15 minutes chair on on a non um, work related uh, environment, I think that will make a huge difference because um, eventually medical professionals are, are under huge stress. Mm. You you can't even make a little mistake um, in terms of looking after people. Um, so, so the, the standard is high, the expectation is high, uh, workload is high, um, and and definitely because we we are in a, in a business that involve government funding as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we probably trying to to work with the the DHB and PHO to make sure that the government hears about our voices. Um, it's definitely 
underfunding, uh, especially when we're trying to support um, the change over from a um, more traditional way of practicing to a more technology driven, um, we need more support from the government. Mm. And hopefully it will, will change more uh, funding in terms of funding, support, even training from the government. Um, uh, because not all the clinic or medical clinic are lucky enough to be well prepared. Um, I think um, a lot of, um, especially older GP clinic, um, they're suffering. So mm -hmm. that's one of the thing, the challenge in our industry. Uh, on the other side, um, because uh, our our city clinic um, is centrally located in on Queen Street, so um, there might be uh, because of the closing border. So we, we our clientele is it's less um, visitors uh, and also uh, international students at this moment. But we are trying to expand our services to the local um, local clientele. I think that's one of the the change the, the we are shifting at this moment for the next six months. But probably after one or two years, when the borders um, open, that might be a different story. Mm, that's mm. right, because like mm. the city is seems mm. a bit quiet nowadays. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, what do you think? There, um, you know, for our audience here, mm. like um, what do they expect to change the way of doing business in the next in the future in maybe in your like um area how you you know how you actually doing virtual at the moment yeah but mm. is it going to be more in the future or is yep. it like um, i i can definitely see uh the advantage of um having the option to go mm. on telephone console um video console for especially uh city center we do have a lot of uh, younger clientele which is very uh, popular among uh, among them um and then the older generation probably in in the, in, in their fifties are picking up slowly mm. but i can see the trend of uh virtual virtual consultation is more and more happening mm. um the other one is uh not only the consultation but by mean of of uh, technology or electronic communication. Uh, say for example, when we're talking about the booking mm. uh, or emailing um, and also electronic prescription, communicate uh, with the other um, specialists by um, electronic letters and referral through the um, say health link system. Those are the improving. Um, it's on, 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 on the rising, like we are, um, and we are doing the lab test order form or online rather than writing it and then send it to um, to patient. So we can actually book online and the patient can can go to lab test stra straight away for the for, okay. for the blood test, for example. Okay. So those are the um, uh, uh, I think more and more opportunity uh, to use technology in the medical field. Yeah. And the other thing I can see, especially in Albany, <laughs> we can see more and more New Zealanders are coming back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and then um, probably the uh, job market overseas is not um, not a fantastic situation for them. Um, so I, I I can see a lot of um, uh, at least Asian New Zealanders they are coming back. Mm. Um, so in Albany clinic we. Um, even though the the consultation per capita is decreasing, but we are having a lot of new involvement in our medical center for the last couple of months. So mainly because <coughs> people are coming back. So okay. so I think uh, for the next six months or even a year, mm -hmm. I can see a lot of um, uh, New Zealand, Asian New Zealand, they're coming back okay. to live in New Zealand. Okay. And that's one one trend I can I can tell from from the enrollment, uh, and our clientele and the other trend uh, from the health point of view is our clientele are, are more aware of their um, well-being and health comparatively say two years ago. Mm. Um, say people starting to see preventive measure. Mm. So um, you probably uh, never had uh, a patient come to you say, I want to have um, a 20 year old, want to have um, a pneumonia in, uh, immunization injection. You suddenly have a lot of inquiry about how to prevent illness, such as preventive immunization, and also, uh, um, also a health check, mm. even they are well. So okay. those are the trends I can see. Okay, yeah. so you think like, are you actually suggesting a lot of like a medical 
people who are practicing medical service should actually looking into more like uh, these trends and then those and then also <coughs> looking to virtual consultations um, mm -hmm. and they're also like looking to how technology can help them you know mm -hmm. to to prepare for the like um, uncertain future mm -hmm. okay I'll just move on to um, Daniel Daniel um, yeah, t uh, like share some comments with our um, audience here. You know, what do you expect the changes going to be like uh, in the next, you know, f few years or in the future? Sure, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess Jesse's right around the digital part, around new technology. Mm -hmm. We're definitely seeing more businesses be more digital, mm -hmm. uh, be more, uh, embracing the use mm -hmm. of technology. Um, and I think uh, just around e even doing business overseas using technology, that's mm -hmm. becoming a lot more, e a lot easier. Um, we, we've, um, you know, there's no advantage now um, pitching in person because everybody is presenting on, on Zoom mm -hmm. anyway. So it, it, that that border thing doesn't make that much difference anymore. I think from a staff and from a people perspective, uh, peop um, employees are going to be more um, uh, wanting and pushing for things like working from home, flexibility. Um, so that's I guess employees will need to recognise that. Um, and from um, business overall, I think risk management is going to be a big thing uh, across mm -hmm. all businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and that means that how you design projects and being able to adapt when things go wrong, and that will be considered right at the start. Mm, that's interesting how you say everything's changing and everyone's wanting work from home and mm -hmm. all the offices are empty now. Like mm -hmm. People are looking to downsize the office. Mm -hmm. So that's why like, um, I'm just like, I think the whole lockdown and COVID-19 kind of, kind of like accelerate like um, you know the speed of how we're using technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agree. Yeah. So Ia, I'll come back to you. So for our viewers, you know, any comments like how you expect the changes gonna be like, you know, in in, in the future, on your like on your side, like e-commerce or other training area. I mean, I'm quite lucky because I was already online, mm -hmm. um, but um, I have seen a lot of businesses shift online. I've heard of businesses giving up all of their leases and just predominantly only being online um, and same with the zooming like I've never done so many zooms in my life and in the future I probably probably won't go and meet you for coffee I'll probably just zoom you so yeah just shifting more online yeah. shifting more online yeah and everyone is, but there's some business you still can't really shift online people still want to like you know well, you say that, but I've started doing my grocery shopping online and mm -hmm. they've they've created uh, countdowns done a, a I don't know, a online grocery store, so no one's allowed in that store. It's literally for people to pick and pack, their staff to pick and pack and then do online orders. Um, so I mean, there's people are developing new things, like that's new, that's quite weird. <laughs> but I'm online shopping my groceries every week, so yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite interesting, okay. Mm. So, um, you know, sh maybe one piece of advice you can share with our audience here to help them, you know, with their future business to become more mm -hmm. resilient? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, to be honest, I think what everyone's learned from this year is you can't always plan for everything because who could have foreseen this? Um, and it's just being able to adapt quickly, thinking, mm -hmm. problem solving, um, how can I adapt and just doing it. Just quick, quickly doing it. Yeah, just quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it's mu much easier if you're an entrepreneur, but mm. if you're like a large company, as you said, Dan Daniel mentioned before, it's a bit like slower. Harder. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Daniel, what's your piece of advice for everyone here? Well, I was, I was going to say adaptability, <laughs> um, so I'll think of something different. Um, but I, I think for me, is, is, is maybe around handling the stress and all the uncertainty that's going on. And um, something to kind of consider and put into perspective is, is this, is this going to be something I will still think about it and on my mind five years from now? Mm -hmm. And when you, when, you th when you start increasing the time horizon on that problem, you realize half the stuff that we're stressing about, we're worried about, mm. it, it doesn't matter. It mm. doesn't matter on a, on a really long term. Mm. And so that kind of relieves a lot of that tension and that pressure. And then that, that lets you focus on the things that you do need to spend time and energy on. Mm, that's true. When you look at back after five years time, you were thinking, oh, 2020, that's an interesting year. <laughs> you know, that just be a normal year. Everyone's just stayed home. <laughs> you want to think about all these stress you like mm. facing all these during the lockdown. Actually, I, f I feel like uh, you know, the, during the lockdown was quite a good time to spend time with your families, mm -hmm. and you know, mm. it's good family time. Because we're all, always very busy, mm -hmm. so it is the only time we can just spend longer time with our kids and family. Yeah. You know, how about Jesse? What's one piece of advice? Um, I think the key message for, especially for. Um, medical clinic industry um, 
I think it's important to have a business continuity plan, uh, our contingency plan in place. Um, so, um, and then have a review every, every now and then, say half a year or yearly mm -hmm. review. Um, uh, and we do, like in, in, in our practice, we do look into the, um, the natural uh, hazard or disaster such as fire, mm -hmm. uh, uh, flooding, um, uh, earthquake, and also including pandemic, how to handle yeah. it. So when, when we, uh, we are reviewing it, and, and, and this is uh, my exercising, you are preparing for the future challenge. And, um, and always ask yourself, what if, okay, what if this happened? Mm. Okay? And, and always think about a rainy day while you are having a sunny day. Um, I think that's my advice. Mm. That's quite interesting because um, you know, coming, coming from a risk background, I used to review all these continuity, business continuity plan and the risk area. Mm. And then normally in a large company, they, they review these every like six monthly or every year. Mm. But for entrepreneurs, you know, you never thought about this. You know, mm -hmm. so who will have a business continuity plan? <laughs> you know, as an entrepreneur, that would be the last thing on your to-do list. Mm. But I think it, you know, you guys raise a good point that here, on, as an entrepreneur, how, no matter how small is your business, always have like a plan. Like you know, in case of something happens, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a backup plan and or somewhere somewhere to store your data as well. Mm -hmm. If you can't store like you know on cloud, mm -hmm. maybe store a hard drive as a backup at home or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's quite interesting. So okay, it's important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we will probably go to um, some of the Q and A questions, um, we which we have online. And for oh, yeah. those mm -hmm. of you um, still forgot or haven't yet typed the questions in um, slido.com, mm. you could please do it now. I still have time for questions. So we've got a question here um, for Ia. You probably already covered in the, like previously, but you know, you have, there's a question here that says you've achieved a lot in your career. You know, what is one of the low lights that you have ever had? In your life, and what you learn from it? Um, I remember, I can't remember what year it was, but it was a year where I was doing really well in my business, I was making lots of money, mm -hmm. but I was still really like quite sad. Uh, and looking, you know, stepping out of the picture, looking back now, it was. I was not very happy in my relationship. I was working so much, uh, and now what I've learned from it is like. It doesn't really matter how hard you work and how much money you make. If you, your personal life, uh, if you're not happy in your relationship with your family or your friends, it's having all of these achievements doesn't mean anything. Mm. Um, you have to be very balanced. And I think now I'm in a good relationship. I have a little baby. I'm um, spending a lot more time with my family and friends. So it's much yeah. more balanced. Work-life balance, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Which is hard for our entrepreneurs, but like mm. we try. Mm -hmm. And I thought connections, you talk about, you know, have the connections with your families and it's mm -hmm. quite like, important especially during you know hard times uncertain yeah. time mm. um daniel like uh, there's a question for you so what are you currently doing to upskill yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah well um is um, similar to um what's been kind of talked about um um having a baby with my wife like soon <laughs> so um learning how to be a dad um going on to uh, antenatal classes learning how to change diapers that kind of say how do you how do you hold a baby um so it's it's quite 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 interesting for me and, and very different from uh some of the stuff where i used to be you know reading on technical stuff or mm -hmm. learning how to do sales and that kind of stuff and now it's more family orientated mm -hmm. so i'm yeah excited about you that you might find some like um tech related things can <laughs> yeah, <help> no you. <laughs> doubt <laughs> <laughs> or you may create one or invent one or something like to help people like mm. yeah. look after baby or yeah. self-feed <laughs> <laughs> That'll be useful. <laughs> Just an idea. That's a big challenge as yeah. a new dad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, um, there's a question for you. So, yeah. um, mm. what are you doing to be um, culturally responsive in your career? Uh, my background, I came to New Zealand when I was 15 years old. Mm. Um, I'm originally from uh, Guangzhou, China. Mm. Um, so, I virtually put up in a Chinese way. Um, when I came to New Zealand, um, uh, I find uh, uh, my Chinese upbringing give me resilience, uh, so that I, can, I I I did quite well at uh, high school and then went on to the medicine uh, in Otago University, and further on to do my business degree in University of Auckland, um, and then throughout my career uh, I didn't realize um, 
my background as a culture, uh, as a Chinese, was the advantage until I one day I joined um, Windsor Medical Center. Mm. Um, number one, um, we are multilingual, um, so for f and and also we are literally attracting patients already from all around Auckland. Um, without advertising, so so that's my cultural advantage. There's a need for Chinese doctors. Exactly. Yeah. So um, if we look around, um, mm. uh, multilingual Chinese speaking, fluent Chinese speaking, uh, in Cantonese, Mandarin, English, uh, with the the the, the understanding of um, Chinese culture um, and provide uh, culturally sensitive um, services to to our clientele. Uh, not many people can offer that. So I think, the, um, and also the the principle apply. Um, so our practice um, staff, all of them are multilingual. Mm -hmm. uh, why from the beginning of being a receptionist? So when we recruit probably a uh, recruitment we do have uh, deliberately have all this multicultural background uh, staff. Mm. So right from the beginning of um, from the front staff, the nurses, the doctor, um, pharmacists, um, we all need to speak and write in different language, especially in Mandarin. Um, mm. and, and by doing that, um, I think we create a niche market. Um, uh, when we talk about competition, uh, probably not much around, but we need to be self-improving in, 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 in the culturally sensitive, uh, because younger generation of Chinese is quite different from older generation. So we are still evolving technology-wise, culture sensitive-wise, know what they are facing, what kind of worry they have. For example, international students, they, they, are, they are all from wealthy family, but what kind of challenge they are facing, probably uh, adaptive to the new uh, environment in New Zealand, mm. and also um, stress um, for study, away from isolation from family, um, and also they, they are all open-minded, they, they want to have a social life, to have a well-being. So those are the things that I think we need to look at um, the culture as a whole. Mm. So I think um, we are keen to be the leader of this industry for, for our clientele. Okay, thank you, Jesse. I've got a question for um, Daniel and Ia. Um, what is different about entrepreneur mindset and, an, and just an ordinary person mindset? <laughs> Uh, I think I get very bored easily, so I always want to do stuff and I always want to challenge myself and do more. Mm. So I feel like maybe that's why I'm doing all these businesses because I'm bored. All the time I get bored easily, I don't know. So if you're bored, make sure like you do something. like Do what, something. What it? <laughs> I feel like this is probably like the glass is half full or half empty view. Mm. And as an entrepreneur, you're always more optimistic about what things are and you're willing to take, take risk and try new things. Mm. Mm. That's true. I mean, so I'm still looking at the tablet here. If you guys have any questions, please submit it. Um, it's um, slido, S-L-I-D-O, dot com. And then please use the code W550 as a code to join the live chat. So um, so also, like, there's a question here. Is, is it like, um, is, is it difficult like to actually start something like, um, totally new which you are because you're familiar with um e-commerce but if you if, if you know for example you're doing like um education course at the moment it's something you never done it before is, is it diff difficult and how do you actually like you know put yourself in into that situation uh so i started I, I did my own online course because people kept asking me questions about how i started my business it's usually the same question so i thought i'm just going to summarize everything people ask me and i'm gonna turn it into an mm. online course. Mm. Um, it was definitely hard. I had to figure out how to do recording um, and then also how to sell it, how to market it. Um, so it's, it is always hard, I think, starting something new. But again, if you're determined and you try lots of things, you, I feel like you'll make it work anyway. You try to make it work. That's yeah. the entrepreneur spirit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel, like, you, you have to come up with something new. It's part of your, like, sure. you know, your, your adventure, your journey. And you, just, just your business model. 
<laughs> is it difficult always to come up with something new? What if you lose the you know inspiration, like to come up with something new? Yeah, I, I think the main thing here is don't be a, don't be afraid of doing things that are difficult. Follow your passion. Mm. Do things that you really like, love doing, or you really you really want something to change in the world. Mm. And when you do that, the difficult things actually disappear. Mm. You will find a way to learn new skills or bring people from your onto your team that can help. There, there's other ways around that, but but find something that you really want to do. Something you really want to do. That, that's that what you will be passionate about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jesse, that's an in interesting case here. Mm. Like, um, I know you have a medical degree, mm. but you actually also did a commerce degree. Yeah, Is it bachelor in? In um, accounting and finance. <laughs> accounting and actually, finance. Yeah. In Auckland Uni. Yeah. So, so have did you do that before the medical or after the medical? What I makes actually, you do that? I actually, as I mentioned previously. Um, I interested in um, science and medicine, mm. but on the other hand, I find it quite dry, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I vividly remember in health science year, uh, I might be the first person arrived to the to the library, and the last person to leave. So imagine that we are doing it after couple of years and say, oh, okay, what else can I do? Okay, and and I want something more lively. Uh, more reality. Like accounting. And <laughs> <laughs> like business. <laughs> so, um, and I think all the med school, the um, classmates, they are quite uh, into academic and um, researches. Um, I think that's a lot. I, I, back then, I was thinking, is it the life I'm going to have, having dig down my head and doing doing a uh, lot of uh, medical related field only but uh, the answer in my heart is no I want to do something more more lively more challenging and more more more, more real uh, because medicine is real but it's untouchable <laughs> um, so so I want to combine these two 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 things so I can see the opportunity that um, uh, because I did my health sciences uh, first year in in Auckland and then I said why not complete it a degree. Mm -hmm. So I actually um, took um, summer school, uh, extra summer school while doing it in Otago. I do, did my summer school uh, in Auckland University. So you did it at the same time? At the same time. Medical and a um, yeah. batch of commerce accounting. Yeah, and then uh, in so between. So obviously medicine is too easy yeah, for you. In between, <laughs> I, I come back and for the full year to study, to finish my you know, my double degree in oh. um, uh, business, uh, and then I complete my, my last year in mm. of. Um, Training intern, what we call it, training intern, uh, need to have a hospital placements uh, in, in in Otago, mm -hmm. uh, mainly in Dunedin uh, mm -hmm. and Wellington. Um, so I actually um, travel around the, the the city quite, I mean around different towns, yeah. um, quite a couple times. Uh, when I did my degree in in Auckland University, mm -hmm. sometimes I need to travel all the way from back to from Wellington to Auckland over the weekend, for example. So back then, I don't know what's the mm. motivation. I just want to do it. Just do it. Um, yeah. Mm. I think you know time management is quite important. That could be our next topic, you know, in the future. So, mm. <laughs> so talk about time management here. We have to wrap up. So, mm. um, we're going to have a leave a hit there for the the questions. So, thanks for everyone sending through the questions. I hope everyone, um, you know, inspired by tonight's panel. Um, we we we've heard a lot of interesting like you know facts and uh, you know personal experience about you know our three speakers today, and um, and then we hope you take into your real entrepreneurial thinking and venture in the future. And thanks, Ia, Daniel, and Jesse for your insights about your business and your personal life, and and you know for all our alumni and friends, remember you're not alone out there in the world. You are part of the world class university community and you have access to a strong, vibrant global network and opportunities to stay connected. I hope the University of Auckland Chinese alumni um, community can help you as you continue on with your career journey. We're here to help you um, with your network and forming the connections with, and as well strengthening the existing ones. So speaking of network, uh, um, please mark your calendar for New Zealand Alumni Event Shanghai, which is a New Zealand Shanghai um, New Zealand Central at in Shanghai on 3rd of November 2020. Enjoy a Kiwi style barbecue and mix and mingle with your New Zealand alumni. 
stay tuned online for more so more details please look at the um, website and um, so this this next exciting moment here we have our price draw <laughs> So we have um, so we have two platforms here. One is from the University um, Eventbrite uh, registration, and we have one through the, um, the whole garden platform. So we actually have the two whole garden platform people here, um, and uh, we have this the the big bowl for the university registrations. So I'm going to show you what's inside the <laughs> inside the, um, the the gift, and so you get a. Um, drink bottle and some vitamins and um, a cell phone wallet and um, a key ring from the university and you can get a reusable bag from the university I feel like I'm like a um, you know TV <laughs> seller <laughs> infomercial <laughs> person but anyway so it's very interesting um, so thanks for our sponsors of tier gift and um, I'm gonna do the five person draw from the university even bright um, like registration, do you guys want to pick one name? <laughs> <laughs> and you... Oh. I'll get in there. <laughs> See who's the lucky one. See who's the lucky one. Read it. Okay, you can read it. I have Samuel Wong. Samuel Wong, Samuel Wong. If, you have, if you're Samuel Wong, please contact us. Um, if you also call Samuel Wong, like... <laughs> Email. <laughs> oh, we have the email. Just, just contact us and check if it's the, the, the Samuel Wong. <laughs> I, I have Lawrence Chan. Lawrence Chan, please contact us, university. Like, um, and then you can pick up the the gift from the university. If you registered overseas or, or outside of, uh, or if you are outside of Auckland, don't worry, we will ship it to you. I have Cindy, um, uh, Cindy Law. Cindy Law. Law. Cindy Law. Cindy Law. Um, uh, email is oh, independent. We'll that. <laughs> if you call Cindy Law, <laughs> if you call Cindy Law, or if you believe you call Cindy Law, <laughs> please come to see us or email us. Don't worry if you're overseas or outside of Auckland, we will ship it to you. And we have two um, two um, people from Host Gardens, and one is called Sunny Yu Ting. Sunny Yu Ting. So if you have the name, please come <laughs> contact us or contact Whole Garden. That's fine. And uh, Linda Lam, Linda L Y D I A, Lam L I L A M. So if you call Linda Lam, please contact us. So if you're not in Auckland, that's fine. We can ship it to you or the gift. Um, yeah. So that's the price draw, and we um, we thanks um, Otia Gift and the University for the um, the gift pack. And so so yeah contact us otherwise you might not get it um, and congratulations to all the tonight's winners and for those who miss out don't worry next time you know so before we conclude I want to express m my sincere appreciation to all of you without this event it would not be possible so Vice Chancellor Professor Dong Freshwater Deputy Vice Chancellor Professor Jennifer Dixon Joe our alumni relation manager the wonderful team of media produc productions, the alumni relation office, and last but not least, Sam Ying and his team from Whole Garden. We wouldn't have done it without you. So yeah, applause. <laughs> special thanks to Chinese um, special thanks to Chinese alumni club committee members: Jonathan Lee, Stephen Lin, Jackie Hu, Kevin Choi, Winnie Lu, and Jennifer Shi. In marketing support from Sam Ying, Jessica Mao, and Waylon Du. Thank you so much. We are also constantly thinking ways to improve our service to our members, and your feedback are important to us. So please um, connect us on our social media. We have Facebook page, we have WeChat group, so join us. And let us know if you're interested in to be part of the club committee. We would like to, um, and you would like to organize events for our members. Um, thank you again for joining us tonight.